Hi YouTube, uh, welcome back to the latest of my unboxing videos. Thanks for joining me and a big thank you to all of my new subscribers. I say all of them, uh, it's probably about five people but to be honest uh, I never expected any on my channel so thanks for uh, subscribing and I hope you're enjoying the content and it is appreciated. Anyway, today we're uh, obviously taking a look at this fella, FT39 Fans Toys Jabba which is their interpretation of a masterpiece blur. Now, I was looking forward to this figure, um, probably more than any of their movie bots actually, because it looked to be pretty spot on. Um, but it's been quite a contentious release for one reason or another, and I'll, I'll go into that as we go through the video. But as always, let's just start with a quick look at the box and the packaging, um, manual, etc. It's a pretty standard fans toys box. Um, the artwork is is quite nice actually. I, I you know, it's a, it's a good representation of the animation model. I think a few liberties taken, obviously, with details, but it, it gives a good impression and and is in keeping with the rest of their box artwork. Move around to the sides. You just have the usual text and fans toys URL on there. On the back, we have a look at the figure with some of Fans Toys' other movie bots. You have Rouge and Coot there. Now, I would say keep in mind the colours. I don't know how well, again, these things show up on camera. But the colours on the box don't look the way that they do in person. And that's that actually is the major bone of contention with this release, is the colour palette. So... Yeah, keep that in mind as we go through because it's going to come up a few times. Moving on from the box, we have the manual. Again, pretty standard fans toys. Fair. It's full colour. Lots of uh, transformation steps in this one. Leads you all the way through to the finished alt mode. Now I'm going to hold this up. And I would say take a very good look at this because it's as close as I'm going to get to showing you the alt mode in this video for reasons that I will explain as we go through. Uh, let's just say that even the early steps of this transformation are best described as hellish. Uh, and I, I honestly, I didn't want to go through with it for fear of uh, ending up with a broken figure. Anyway, uh, it's, as I say, pretty standard. Gives you an overview of the, the, the transformation for both the figure and the target master and other weapon options, etc. There you go. Seen one, seen them all. And, of course, it also comes with the masterpiece style bio card, which gives you his biography and his tech specs. Again... Very similar to the official and third party cards that you get with most figures these days. And nothing particularly special to see here. Okay, so we'll be back in a second with a quick look at the robot mode for FT39 Jabba. Okay, so we're back with a look at the figure itself, FT39 Jabba. I just want to take a, a second to apologise for the state of my voice. Uh, this is unfortunately what happens when you have a child who's just started school. You end up picking up every bug known to man. So my throat feels like sandpaper at the moment. And there will probably be quite a lot of swallowing and the odd coughing fit as I go through this video, which I may or may not edit out. Um, so yeah, apologies in advance for the slightly rough sounding nature of my voice. Anyway, here we go uh, with, with Jabba. Uh, now, at first glance, he looks pretty sweet, I think. Uh, it, you know, it's very evocative of the animation model to my eyes. Certainly when you compare it to the original G1 toy and also Unique Toys Buzzing. Um, the latter of which wasn't a terrible figure um, aesthetically, but it wasn't really very accurate to the animation model. I was really looking forward to this figure because it looked pretty spot on, I have to say. Um, you know, within the confines of 
you know, the engineering limitations, shall we say, of, of translating an animation model to a working transformable figure. And I still think aesthetically it, it isn't too bad. I think it looks pretty great in terms of the lines, the shape, everything. It, it really does remind me of the G1 animation blur. I think that's great. But there is one major issue with it that only became apparent when this figure shipped. And it differs significantly from the promo pics that were shown right up until release. And I am talking about, of course, the colour. Now, on camera, it probably doesn't come across as well as it would in person. Um, but I'm hoping you can get the gist of what I'm saying. Now, Blur, Blur's animation model, and indeed his G1 toy, was a mix of this sort of lighter sky blue and a darker royal blue. Now, that was what all of the promo pictures um, showed right up until a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a week ago, when this sort of first got into people's hands. Unfortunately, when it arrived, what we got was a completely different colour from the one that had been featured in all of those promo shots. So while we still have the gorgeous sky blue coloration, which is you know, very, very much in keeping with the animation model, and indeed these grey boot pieces and feet, what we have here and on the chest and the head and various other accents on the figure instead of being that royal blue, is very, very obviously purple in person. Now, this was highlighted in the main Jabber thread on TFW, and the Fans Toys rep in there came in and said that they had made a colour change because the original colour didn't look quite right in hand, it didn't pop, by which... I assume he meant the people who salivate over fans toys premium finish would assume that it didn't look premium enough for them because it wasn't sparkly and metallic. So they changed they changed the colour at the last minute. Unfortunately this colour, contrary to his assertions, is not blue. It's under some lights it can look blue, in fact I'm looking at this through the camera now and it does look slightly blue. Um, I, I don't know what my camera's doing actually, it's drifting for some reason, it's not moving, there's something weird going on with my camera today. Anyway, um, it, it does look blue under certain lights, certain sort of colour temperature lights I guess, I guess I don't know what... This, the lights I'm using are photography lights, so they would be, I guess, daylight, really. That's, that's what they're supposed to be. I forget what it is. Is it D6500 or something like that? Anyway, or 65000. I'm not really up on all that. But it's, it's a natural light, anyway. But while I'm looking at it in person, under these natural lights, it still looks purple. It doesn't even really look like a metallic blue. It looks like a metallic purple. And it does not look right. Especially because I had prior knowledge of the original colour, which I thought looked amazing. I mean, as I said, this was easily my favourite Fans Toys movie bot from an aesthetic standpoint. I was, you know, after some slight disappointments with other figures, so the, the original release of Quartus, for example, being the incorrect colours, um, hoodlum not being quite right, you know, it's, it's more magenta than the pinkish sort of colour that it is on the animation model and in the movie. So I was like, great, Fans Toys have finally nailed one of the movie bots, you know, yay. And then they go and do this. And yeah, I'm not going to lie, the fact that they didn't publicise it prior to release in any way, shape or form... It's pretty sucky. I think it's a bad move. 
It's it's uh, it's false advertising. It is tantamount to false advertising. You know, if you, it's like buying Optimus Prime and getting a maroon Optimus Prime, a metallic maroon Optimus Prime. You know, nobody would stand for that. But, as usual, a lot of people are coming out and defending fans' toys and saying, well, you know, you're overreacting. I don't think it's an overreaction to expect a product to look the way it's been advertised up until release date. Now, I understand things can and do change during a product's design phase, but fans' toys makes these products, I cannot believe that at some point prior to them coming off the factory line and being boxed up, someone couldn't take a photo and put it either in the forums or on their Facebook page or website or whatever. Nobody bothered to do that. So the first we knew about this was when people got them in hand and by then it's too late. You've paid for it, it's shipped and you can't send a figure back because it's the wrong colour in quotes so I mean I, I'm, I'm pissed off with it to be honest I think this is just another in quite a long line now of fans toys minor quibbles um, and it's not the only issue with this figure so don't don't think that my only issue with this is the colour I mean it is my my first bugbear and quite a big one for me I'll be honest because it's 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 taken what, for me, was a must-own figure and something I was really excited about and turned it into a bit of a, yeah, feels like another placeholder, you know. If, and also feels like, despite their claims to the contrary, in six months, a year, we're going to get a Toon repaint of this that has the correct colours. Uh, pretty much the same thing as happened with Quartus, where we got the Quartus T, which had much more accurate Toon colours. And is actually happening with Sovereign now, albeit that's after a couple of years, which is slightly more palatable. And the original colours for that weren't necessarily wrong anyway. But this is just, it's becoming a bit of a pattern with fans toys now. They release something, something not quite right about it. And then, you know, you just have in the back of your mind, a few months down the line, they're going to release something that is more accurate. And us animation freaks are going to be like, well, that's what we wanted the first time. And, okay, we're not obligated to buy it again, but as collectors, you you know you know yourselves, the sort of mentality collectors have, we're going to want it, aren't we? And then there's no guarantee you're going to be able to shift this guy on for what you paid for it. I've sold a couple of figures recently for losses, even figures that, you know, are quite maybe sought after as wrong, but... My MP10, obviously, since MP44 came out and TE01 and whatever, I took quite a big hit on selling that, you know, when you take shipping into consideration, etc. Admittedly, I'd had a couple of good years out of it, so I'm not, you know, that, that disappointed. But still, um, I had a, I had similar experience with, with uh, my second copy of the version 3 TE01. I... Um, Again, you move that on, but that's still on sale, so you take a hit on it. Anyway, I've gone on far too long about the colour. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that it's quite evident that um, it's not blue. And I will get over it. But I just don't like being lied to by manufacturers. Anyway, let's let's put that to one side, put a pin in that. And let's just take a look at him from 360 because he's still, I think, quite a nice looking bot. The sculpt is pretty good by and large. So there's uh, obviously his front view. And he has a very clean profile, which I like. After, you know, so many recent figures having huge backpack and kibble, it's really refreshing to see a bot that looks quite clean from the profile view. And even from the back, it looks pretty good, you know. There's uh, there's not too much there to distract. I mean, the legs, okay, they're not super, super clean, but they're pretty tidy. You know, you've got a bit of a butt flap there, but that's actually animation accurate. And if you want, you can fold it up like that if you don't like it. But I'm actually going to leave it down because I don't think it looks too bad. Um, 
excuse me for a second. <coughs> oh, apologies for that. As I said, I'm uh, slightly dying. Um, oh, and it's my birthday as well. I forgot to mention that. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is a birthday present to myself. And I feel like death. And, uh, and it's the wrong colour. But anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah, again, I think, you know, I think it's a really lovely looking figure profile wise and it really does evoke memories of the animation model i think it's a it's a super super looking figure in that respect i, I really do like it as the things that i don't like there are there are still a few unfortunately uh, what's clear about this figure is that it's a product of I would say engineering of a certain age, uh, a bit like Hoodlum, for example, this doesn't feel like it was engineered or designed recently. I th this is obviously a, a design they've had floating around for a while, a bit like Hoodlum, and they've only just decided to release. And while the, the, the robot mode looks good, there are some things that just aren't great. Um, w one of those things is this, the... The solid one piece crotch plate, which is very, you know, 2016, 17. Um, you know, individually articulated hip skirts are all the rage now, and we, we don't get them much like Hoodlum. And indeed, MP09, you know, Rodimus Prime. Uh, the same for the back piece, that's all one piece there. That that's I guess it seems like a minor nitpick, but it's still it's still a nitpick as far as I'm concerned. It's it's a bit of a pain. Um, another thing, and this is something that I don't think Franz Toys should get a pass for because a lot of other companies get grief for it. You know, TEO One got a huge amount of stick for this with their Optimus Prime, and that is we have mid thigh rotation, which with a square legged bot really breaks the sculpt more than it does if it's located at the knee i think um to one actually being located at the knee and the way the leg was shaped and designed the rotation didn't actually look too bad um but here it doesn't look great at all and also as part of the transformation these pieces here move in and out and they have a tendency to keep doing that while you're posing and manipulating the figure and again, that doesn't look great. And even when they're pushed all the way out, they never quite sit flush or look right. So I was playing with them for a long time and I couldn't get them to look like they were completely natural. Uh, another thing that I noticed as well is that the, um, the heel spurs, the feet don't sit completely evenly. Um, there isn't a lot of ankle tilt either. I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at playing with around that much which really isn't going to give you much of a wide stance. You can, get a, you can get a bit of an A stance out of him, but as you can see, his whole foot isn't touching the floor. And if you went any wider than that, you know, that's it. You're, you're not getting any more rotation, or sorry, ankle tilt. So about there is about as wide as you're going to get without it looking silly. Other than that, there's one other thing that I had a bit of an issue with and it comes down to the overall build quality of the figure actually on this bicep the rotation isn't too bad on this one it's super stiff or, or at least it was until I freed it up a bit um, it felt like it was going to break because it's a very flimsy joint it's one of those joints where it's a, a circular piece that fits into a grooved piece so you're basically rotating a circle inside of a, of a groove and I guess with the paint on it it makes it slightly too big so it didn't freely rotate until I got in there and scored some of it off and it felt like it was just going to snap and that, now this joint does open up for transformation so I was able to pop it out have a look at what I was dealing with and then free it up a bit but when I first tried out of the box, it was one of the many joints that felt like it was going to shear just by manipulating it as was intended. 
so those those are the things that I've initially mentioned, or sorry, I've initially noticed in bot mode that were slightly problematic. Um, well, also I guess as well his his um, his Donald Trump tiny hands, which are just very small. But then hands are always weird with bots. You know, Hoodlum has the same problem. These exact same hands actually, they just look very weird and small. But I, I, know, I know I'm nitpicking, but there's a reason, and it, it's because this is an old... It does feel like an older design, and I really feel like Fans Toys is basically going on its name at this point, and any other company would get a lot more grief than they do about doing this, releasing a figure of this state in 2019. They seem to get a pass for it, and I don't really think they should. You know, If a figure's got issues, they need to be highlighted and addressed. And it's such a pity because you look at it and it is a great clean looking sculpt really. I love the detail on it. And if that colour was what it should be, I would be praising this to high heavens. Honestly, I would. Instead of kind of feeling a little bit like, nah, what could have been. Anyway, let's move on from that. We'll, we'll go in now to not a transformation, not a look at the alt mode, but a discussion of the transformation and the alt mode. After which we'll take a closer look at some of the other elements of the bot and the accessories and then I'll, uh, I'll give my final thoughts. So just give me a second to, uh, to clear this scratchy throat of mine and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we're back and what I wanted to discuss was the engineering on this guy. Now... As I said, I was going to transform this, not on camera, but I was going to put it into alt mode to show you because I genuinely like the alt mode. I think it's an interesting alt mode because it's one of the only figures that isn't a standard Earth sort of type car. It's a, a futuristic hover car and it looks really great and it is pretty accurate to the animation model. Now, what happened when I attempted this was that I got about four or five steps into it and was so scared that I was going to break the figure, I abandoned it. And those fears were exacerbated because another, at least two reviewers, far more famous reviewers than me, have either broken or stressed their figures just by transforming. I think Paik broke his on his review uh, he was the first person to review it that i'm aware of he did a live a live stream unboxing review and then a follow-up review and he snapped his figure part of his figure during said live stream and i believe t-man's done a review and maybe he either broke it or stressed it there are a couple of others as well who've done it and then people on the forums have been reporting either stress marks out of the box or stress marks after transformation or clean breakages in a number of places i was not comfortable you know i didn't want to break the figure to transform it i display my figures in bot mode anyway i always like to go to alt mode once but in this instance i just felt like the risk wasn't worth it because the last thing i wanted to do was break it and be left with a worthless figure really especially when you can look at other videos if you really want to and and to be honest you know the pictures I've shown you show you what the alt mode looks like. So I apologise if anyone came here looking for a transformation video or an alt mode review. Um, but I'm, I, I'm just not willing to risk it. Uh, the reason being is, as I said, you know, it's the tolerances. The joints, some of the joints on this guy are just stupidly, stupidly tight. Now, these uh, shoulder joints here, the rotation in them... That one I thought I was honestly going to break it, just trying to rotate it so he could hold his gun in a certain pose. The There's at least one person I've seen on TFW who has snapped that joint while transforming it. The bits that normally go are down here. There are two very small die cast hinges in here which are attached to even smaller plastic pieces. That They have to be moved and pushed and stressed quite a lot during transformation. And they've either been stress marked, cracked or plain snapped. And that's been the most common failure so far. 
the way that the other joints were feeling. Now, during the transformation, you have to you have to untab this piece here, and you have to pull this piece up from there and manipulate things and turn things. It's it's a really complex, nasty unenjoyable transformation and I only got five or so steps into it so I, from what I've seen it doesn't get any better I really didn't want to break it for that uh, you know just to just to kind of show off it, it, because those joints the easy joints as I would call them were so so stiff I just figured when I got down here I was asking for trouble that's not great and that's becoming a real problem with fans' toys now. They look amazing, generally. They look amazing. Hoodlum doesn't look too amazing, but, you know. Most of their figures look really good, like sculpted statues. But the transformations just are not fun. They're just unintuitive, you know, a, a bit, really, to do. Uh, there's no, no other way of putting it. They're not fun to do, uh, I'd rather leave them in bot mode. And that's not the case with all of all of my Transformers. I mean, I, the last review I did was for that AOD Power Glide KO. And that was a joy to transform, really. It was e nice and easy. You didn't need a degree in engineering to do it. I didn't feel like I was going to break anything. The same goes of TE01. You know, that's a sturdy figure. It's quite complex, but it wasn't hellish. I got through it okay. And I didn't at any point feel like I was going to break things. Whereas stuff like MP44, you know, obviously broken out of the box and felt like I was going to break more of it, transforming it. Hence why it's never going back into alt mode. And, you know, this and a number of fans toys, other figures like Hoodlum, for example, and Rouge. And from what I'm told, Coot as well, maybe even Apache. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems to be a movie bot theme. It's, it is a problem. There's, I mean, these are supposed to be transforming figures and they're becoming less and less enjoyable. I don't know what's going to change, if anything. I mean, maybe it's because these are older designs. From what I've been told, some of their recent releases, things like Road King, I believe, is supposed to be a really sturdy, good figure with a decent transformation, good engineering. Quietus, see, that's a new figure. But I think, seeing as that kind of pretty much rips off a lot of Elegus's design, maybe that explains why that's not that much fun. But I think they've improved the tolerances on the T version. They've also sorted out some of the things that could cause chest damage. So it may be the first version of that was more of a problem than the, the re-release. Um, but I'm not chancing scratching mine and breaking mine on the T release. Just to see if that's true. So... Anyway, that's where we are. I, I don't feel like I can transform this without breaking it, so I'm afraid I'm not going to. Um, those are my thoughts on why. I hope you understand, and I hope you at least agree with me that something needs to change, not just with fans' toys, but with figures in general. I think the transformations are becoming more and more complex. Well, not even complex, just finicky, just, just you know, difficult. And over-engineered for the sake of it, you know, too clever. Um, I just want to get back to figures that are enjoyable to manipulate and don't feel like they're going to break every time you do so. Anyway, that's my alternate look at an alternate mode without actually going to alternate mode. So I'm going to take a moment, again, sort my throat out, and then we'll be back with a quick look at some of what the figure can do, a bit of comparison with some other figures, and then final thoughts. Okay, so finally, let's have a look at uh, some of the pieces that come with it that I haven't shown off already. Hopefully this will, I might use the old, the old uh, beauty vlogger trick of putting my hand behind to see if it will focus. This is the alternate face. I don't know if it is actually focusing very well it's more of a I wouldn't call it a shouting face actually it's there you go that's focused now it looks like more of a dismayed face than a shouting face uh, it's a nice sculpt but I don't think I'd ever use it I don't think I'd have much use for it 
but it's a nice nice thing to have that just uh, is easy enough to replace you tilt the head back pop the face up from the chin and just pop the new one on it also comes with this clear chest piece if you would like to swap that out for the opaque or swap the opaque piece out for that you have to open the back of the figure up and there is a screw in there you unscrew that that will remove that piece then you pop this piece in screw it back in and there you're done i i don't think i'm going to bother doing that i much prefer this more animation uh, animation accurate look i don't really want a transparent piece so that will never see use he also comes with a couple of of guns you get this weapon here which is a standard transformer style blaster looks okay you know reasonable sculpt work on it it's painted quite nicely nothing special really but you know you have that and then you have this longer rifle which if i'm not mistaken is the one he was using in transformers the movie during his famous uh, decepticons at the wall speech decepticons at the gate whatever uh yeah nice nice enough it's got a, a little bit of paint accent on it the handle flips up this this and the other gun can be mounted underneath him in alt mode but obviously we're not going to try that put this to one side for a second and last but not least well actually possibly least we have his target master i believe this guy was called haywire i'm not a fan of target masters i think they're a crap gimmick i thought they were a crap gimmick in g1 to be honest uh headmasters i'm slightly more up for um but i just thought it was a way to sell the same toy to you twice because a lot of the target masters were existing characters who came with add-on guns rather than new molds uh, certainly you know cup hot rod and blur being the prime examples of that but it, it yeah it's not a great target master it looks okay i guess but he this is another issue actually with the figure in general he has a bit of a problem holding his weapons um, the tabbing system doesn't seem to be completely spot on so this one doesn't seem too bad this one fits and it he secures the gun in there pretty well but then he can't hold the weight of the gun which is just rubbish i mean certain angles he can but as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> will I die a small death again? It still starts to droop and if you, you know, it's not too bad there, but any kind of movement really, and it just loses it. Um, so that's because the shoulders are quite weak. This is, my, mine seems actually better than some, but Pake's copy, for example, his, his figure wouldn't hold it up. Um, the issue with the, main guns uh, as i say the target master didn't feel too bad but these guns then the way they've been designed they don't stay in very well so they literally one touch and it falls out and that's because the tab or the handle isn't the right size i can't remember if this one was slightly better i should probably put him down to do this so i don't drop him yeah, again, this doesn't feel particularly secure. Yeah, look, you know, that shouldn't happen. That's only being held in by the hand being closed. If you that, it just falls out. So again, a tolerance issue, not great. So the only gun that he can actually hold securely is the Target Master Haywire, but he can't hold it because his arm's too weak. The other two guns he can hold, but they fall out of his hands. So, yeah, I don't know. As for Haywire himself, it's a pretty easy transformation. You just pull the legs down like this, split them, uh, put his pseudo, uh, pseudo robot penis back down like that. Take the arms, pull them down like that. On, they're on little ball joints. And then you just pop that down, give him an even larger pseudo robot penis at the back, turn him around, rotate his head, and there you go. You've well, oh sorry, yeah. You've got to rotate the uh, rotate the legs around as well. And 
mine didn't pop off the ball joint actually mine's the only one that i've seen so far in a review where the the ball joint on the one at least one of the legs hasn't popped off so hooray um yeah i'm not a big fan i think it's a really probably the least attractive of the target masters so far i guess it could be accurate i don't really remember what haywire looked like the uh the sculpt's okay i guess looks all right but yeah, I, oh, Target Masters, I just <laughs> can't can't be doing with them. Let's uh, let's do one thing that we didn't do before when I was giving you a look at the figure rather stupidly, and that's a, a look at articulation. Uh, I'll bring him in actually and just show you show you the face sculpt on this one because it's a really nice face sculpt. I mean that's that is so spot on blur. I mean hopefully as well you can see the colour more easily at this close, uh, close up distance. It's definitely purple, not blue. But uh, yeah, anyway, he, he does have a reasonable range of motion. I mean, the, the, the arms can do a 360, both arms, they're very loose. Shoulders, unfortunately, can only go up to there because of the booster. And there's no way of moving that really to, to get any more range of motion. That's, that's disappointing. I'd have preferred it if the the shoulders were sort of hinged so they could move up, which on a more modern modern sort of engineered transformer they would be. Uh, what are you going to do, eh? He does have a very good bicep curl. You can go all the way up on that. That's great. As I said, the, the, uh, the elbow swivel is very tight, so I don't want to force it. It does feel like it's going to break still. It's, it's not great. But you can get some movement out of it. Um, wrists go... 360 as you'd expect not going to bother to do it all the way around he has um, four fingers on a, a base pin knuckle and then a fixed thumb so not great really but I suppose they do a job barely um, he does have good head articulation certainly compared to hoodlum which was awful being on a ball joint you get a good range of motion he can look down well he can look up particularly well and side to side and obviously his head will spin all the way around. So that's that's actually a really, really nice positive for the figure. It doesn't have an ab crunch, again, older engineering, but it does have a ratcheted waist swivel, um, which is weird, I guess maybe because it's part of the transformation, so they've made it slightly more robust, but the arm's not being ratcheted and they really needed to be. When the waist is, is is a bit strange as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah. Anyway, so as for the legs, you have friction to the side, and you can get all the way out on those. They're quite loose, though. I mean, I don't shake my fingers really that much, but I mean, they don't fall, but they they just feel like there's a big jump. So they're they're reasonably stiff up to there, but then they get to there, and then they feel very loose until they get to there. Then they're stiff again. Then they're you know, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you have ratchets forward and back. But again, this hip skirt looks odd when it moves to accommodate that. But they can go all the way up for 90. Back, I think, again, 90. So you have a decent range of motion. You have the aforementioned thigh swivel. But as I said, it breaks the sculpt completely. Knee bend is good. That's double jointed and it can go all the way up like that. So that looks great. So you can get some running poses out of him if you had something to support him. The toes, they will move. You get some like foot and toe tilt on him. Heel spur goes to there. As I said, it's really, it's you know, so you, you can get some running, running poses out of him. So you could you could have him with one toe like that and have him sort of running, running. Which looks okay, like that. But the biggest problem with this guy, as I've said, is the fact that he doesn't have too much in the way of ankle tilt. I mean, it's literally that much, which isn't a lot. But it's enough. He looks okay. And as I say, he looks quite cool in that pose right there. And oddly, looking through the camera now, he looks more blue than purple. But believe me, he is purple. As for comparisons, I'm going to put him back into bot mode. 
uh, sorry, he's already in bot mode. I'm going to put him back into a neutral stance is what I was getting at there. And then we'll bring in a couple of other figures. So just by way of comparison, here he is with Fans Toys Hoodlum. Fairly comparable in terms of height. You know, I think Jabba's slightly taller. I am not a fan of Hoodlum. I mean, I hate this whole collar assembly. It's awful. I don't like these notches, which aren't even needed. Some people have, have sheared them off and sanded them down, and they, they don't really, they're not really needed for transformation to hold it securely. Um, and obviously, there was the issue with the paint that's scratched on the alt mode. I, I don't know. Anyway, so, I mean, it looks okay, it's, but it's not great. As I say, it's, it's, it's what could have been, again. Definitely an older a product of older engineering. And also here he is with Fans Toys Rouge, which aesthetically I love. It looks amazing. I, I prefer this uh, over Azalea by quite some margin, uh, the MMC version Azalea. But again, it's one of those figures that I'll never transform because it's hellish and it feels like it's going to break. But by God, does she look good in that pose there. I think it's a really nice looking figure. Hopefully that gives you a good view of how he scales with other movie bots. I'll just get these two out of the way because there's one one other figure I wanted to bring in for, for a movie bot comparison. Now this is a Decepticon, but I just thought it was quite interesting Although it's not identical, how quietus there, sort of dwarfing him. But you can see now, those colours aren't a million miles away. Now this is the purple version as well of, of the Toon version of uh, Quietus. <clears throat> Good old Cyclonus there. Now I'm not saying these are exactly the same colour because they're not, but they're pretty similar. And He's purple, so that guy sure as hell is as well. I probably should have brought the original release down, which was even sort of bluer, um, which might have been a closer match to that, actually. Uh, but, yeah, if... What's sad is that... Sorry, what's sad is that x Transbots released a figure that is another Decepticon movie bot, that pretty much had the exact colour scheme that Jabba should have had, albeit reversed. You have the sky blue with the lovely royal blue there. And if Jabba had come with that colour blue for these pieces and the chest, I would have been so happy. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Um, and, I mean, it's still aesthetically, I still think it looks nice. It will fill a shelf on my movie bot shelf, my 86 movie shelf, sorry. Um, but again, that's, that's, see, that's not what I wanted to be saying about this figure. I didn't want to be saying it will do a job. Hopefully something better comes along. I wanted to be like, yes, it's great. And this is the first home run that Fans Toys has had with a movie bot. But we're not there. So... You know, it is what it is, as they say. Let's get these uh, these big guys out of the way. And I'll be back with some final thoughts on the figure. Okay, so I'm back with some final thoughts. Well, what do I think about this overall? Uh, I'll try and keep it brief because I'm aware I waffle in these short videos always go on way too long but whether it's worth your time and money i think is ultimately down to your criteria as a collector if like me you're a fan of the tune aesthetic and you're more of a bot display person than someone who manipulates and plays with and transforms your figures over and over and you can overlook the blatant color issue then it's definitely the best available representation of blur. 
So if you have that blur shaped hole in your display that you need to fill, which I did, this is a better choice than buzzing or anything else on the market. There, I think that it, it's probably worth worth you you investing in it. You know, honestly, I, I do. I, I I can't see anything better coming for a while. I mean, this may or may not get a repaint. They said it won't, but you know, I take that with a pinch of salt. I still think this is a. I think it was a little under eighty pounds delivered. It's not super cheap, but it's not hugely expensive either. And it looks the part. It's it's a nice looking figure. The sculpt really is evocative of G1 animation blur. Got fantastic face sculpt. It will look good as a display piece next to the other movie bots in your collection. However, if you are someone who likes to manipulate your figures and someone who wants to transform them, I would really suggest that you check out other videos first and do a lot of research on it because... I personally don't think it will suit you because I I honestly think you're going to suffer from breakages or stress marks or, you know, if not that, then at least severe frustration. It's not a fun transformation. So I would I would just weigh, weigh up the pros and cons before putting your money down. Other than that, yeah, I, I don't really have a lot more to say. I, I think it's... It's a bit of a missed opportunity. It, it looks okay, but the engineering's dated and and frustrating, and the quality's not quite there. You know, just silly little things like the guns not tabbing in properly. Um, there are also a couple of other things that I didn't mention because I'd already done them. But the neck piece is a real pain to tab in. You've got to get the angle quite right, uh, exactly right, sorry, and then push that down harder than you'd like to on a ball jointed neck. Um, there are a couple of other bits as well that are, as I said, I pointed out the the elbows that feel like they're going to break and there are other bits like that on the figure those sliding leg pieces you know I think it's going to look good posed next to Rouge and Hoodlum and some of my other movie bots so that's what I'm going to do with it I'm going to try and not to focus on the quite clearly purple deco every time I look at it easier said than done but if you if you can overlook that, as I said, you'll be probably be very happy with it as a display piece. You may even prefer the colour if you're not a, a tune accuracy stickler. But yeah, for me, it, it is a missed opportunity. Um, nothing I can do about it now. But you, you know, you you live and you learn. Uh, it's definitely made me reticent to pre-order fans' toy stuff in the future. A bit like Takara stuff. I, I'm, I'm reticent to pre-order their stuff now after MP44. I'm hoping the next bot I get is a bit better than this. Um, I don't know what that's going to be at the moment. I think there's been some movement on the Make Toys, Mackay Toys cone heads. I think, is it Grave Digger? Is that their, their dirge? <coughs> Excuse me while I... <laughs> I die again. Um, yeah, I think there's been some movement on that. We've seen coloured test shots with certain retailers, so I think they may finally be coming out, or at least that one is. So I, I, I'm down for that if that is released, so I could be reviewing that next. Other than that, I think it's going to be Sovereign, the movie version of Sovereign. At least I've seen the mould with that, so the only difference is the colour, and I hope to God they don't pull a bait and switch on the colour because I will go mad. Uh, after that I'm not entirely sure what it is it may well be the Takara MP45 and 47 just depending I, and that will probably see me to the end of the year then there's not much else on the horizon that I can think of that I've uh, got any interest in but hopefully you'll come back and join me for those in the meantime I might go back and visit some of the older bots in my collection and just do some quick videos for those if there's any interest and if there is let me know in the comments I might do it anyway, even if there isn't. But uh, I hope you've got something out of this, if only just to give you a bit of clarity on what the figure does look like in hand with some comparisons. And I say again, I apologise, there's no transformation, but I'm not, you know, I don't do that in a lot of my videos, so hopefully you know what you're getting by now. 
but but for this time it wasn't because I didn't want to do it it was because I just wasn't comfortable so thanks again for for tuning into this one and I will be back at some point hopefully in the near future hopefully with without the scratchy throat and coughing fits and I hope to see you then and until next time don't be afraid to leave a comment I always enjoy a, a healthy debate and discussion and I will see you all next time